We are so excited to take our show on the road and over the picket fence. And today we have the opportunity to connect with you from a remodel project that Beth and her husband are taking on. But we're gonna look at it from two different points of view. The view of an investor and then the view of a seller. And so we hope to provide you lots of ideas and tips and then when you're ready to take your thoughts into selling or purchasing your investment, then you can call us. So, so super. Kim, we're here. Yeah. So exciting. Um, we finally took possession just about a week ago. And so I'm excited to share with you and everyone kind of the ideas, the thoughts, the things we're going to start working on on this project. Um, it's a little bit of a moving target, um, as these projects sometimes are. So I'll just share with you what we're thinking. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, and I'll just share what we're going to do from the perspective of renting it out for the future. Okay. Um, and getting the house kind of back up to the level, taking some, um, putting some long overdue love into it. It has been a rental for about 15 or 16 years. And um, it hasn't been kind of kept up to, you know, as an owner would take care of their home. So we're going to fix that and get it shiny and new and um, go from there. So um, how have you just kind of segueing? How are you thinking the market is right now for selling and buying? And what are you seeing right now? Yeah, that's a great, great question. So um, kind of like we have been catching up over the last couple of weeks is we're seeing where perhaps not every home is getting 20 or 25 offers in the core areas. Um, and we're seeing still competition, but not the, not the vast, you know, quantities of offers. So yeah. maybe five to seven offers. Sure. Yeah. I've been saying the same thing that there's still a great time to sell. Yeah. Um, still seeing prices appreciate but some of that pressure has come off a little bit so we're at the middle of may right now uh 2021 20 <laughs> like yeah. said 2021 and um things are still selling great but there are still things that you need to think about in preparing your home for sale pricing it correctly um having a good marketing strategy around getting the highest and best offer. So as we go through, we can kind of talk about if you were to sell maybe this home in today's market versus maybe in six months from now. Hopefully it doesn't take us that long to get it ready, but right. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you would do yeah. um, as a seller, what you would recommend to a seller to yes. do as we go through the house. Yes, absolutely. And that's a great point is that it is gonna be very different what I'll point out today versus if the market, you know, plateaus a bit and right. we don't have this frenzy because some things are more forgivable uh, when we have a bit more of the frenzy. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. So let's, let's have at you wanna, it. You want to take a look? Let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look. So we are in the living room right now. Um, the house is about 1,450 square feet. It's three bedrooms. Right now it's one and three quarter. We'll talk about why it's not going to be one and three quarter. It'll be one and a half when we're done. Um, so good um, size home, not, not too big, not too small um, on that. So it's, it's perfectly manageable for the things that we're gonna be updating. But we're gonna take on some both cosmetic and we're going to take on um, not specifically structural, but there is some unevenness in the floor there's potentially some moisture issues in the crawl space that we'll want to address. Um, you can even notice as nice as these hardwood floors are, they, um, I think they might actually be evening out. There is some cupping in the floor, which tells us there's been a moisture issue right. in the past. Um, yeah, so what I like to do in a house is kind of take a look at the bones, especially for renting. We're not going to make this a new construction home, but we're going to elevate it and bring it up to where we think we can get the highest and best rent from. Um, and we like to embrace, it's a mid-century home, so we like to embrace that in most of our properties. Unfortunately here, a lot of the mid-century features have been stripped away or painted over. So that's gonna be a, a bit of a balance. So some of me is a little disappointed that that's not there. At the same time, it doesn't give me heartburn 
to rip things out. Right. So right. That's, that's true. Yeah. Um, we're, we've already had to put a new roof on. So that happened right after we purchased the home. Um, so that project has been done. And then um, we're getting bids for all the rest of the work right now. And then starting with, I don't know, on camera, you can pick it up, but all of the windows are single pane windows. Okay. So we'll be replacing all the windows. Um, they are definitely, the, luckily they're not cracked. I mean, oftentimes we go into these older homes, right? Yeah. And the windows are cracked um, or there's actually holes in them. Luckily it's not that. So they've been holding the weather, but they're not gonna last too much longer. into the family room which is okay. one of the worst rooms so this is technically the family room it had also been doubled as a master bedroom apparently recently um so the carpet not great needs to we need new flooring in here um for what our idea was is for this room because it goes to the garage the laundry room and another bathroom we were thinking about maybe putting down a luxury vinyl tile. So would love to get your thoughts on that. Something that's gonna wear, be a high wear. Uh, this is a heavily trafficked area because we have the one slider to the back door right, right now and um, into the laundry room. And so, you know, people coming and going, we thought that doing a luxury vinyl tile. And when you redo your um, patio, are you doing the patio again? Are you doing French doors or? For here, I think because this is going to be a rental, we're going to just keep it simple yeah. and do a slider. Yeah. Um, you can see on the walls, um, this wall is paneling. It was probably actually kind of cool in the 60s. This is the 63 house when it was built, um, but it has been since painted multiple times. This used to be paneling and we were wondering what was under the wall. So my husband um, took this off the other day. It turns out the builder must have put paneling on before finishing the wall. Cause you can see none of the uh, seams are taped or mudded. Right. Um, so we're now in a little bit of a quandary cause the other thing we're gonna tackle is there's this um, not so great acoustical tile on the ceiling. Right. And right behind you, you see a little bump out. That is actually a shower that had been built into an original half bath. So this wall right here, you can see the ceiling goes under. Okay. And then this ceiling continues in the bathroom. Right. And we know this is all coming out. So this is where it gets a little bit like if I was selling the house, my advice to myself would have been different and to not undergo this since we're going to own it and we're going to turn it into a rental we really want to get it back in good order right. and do this project once so it means we're probably doing a bit of drywall work in here a bit of finish work a little carpentry right right and then get this room i've sold this floor plan a number of times and it's actually kind of nice because you end up getting this extra space you can do an office or a desk or media center but what do you kind of think of this room? What would you say to someone just selling who had not started ripping the walls apart right. already? Right, I know, right. And that is the trick when you're selling. We In a, in a hot seller's market, we want to be cautious about doing too much. Um, too much that doesn't bring dollars. And so I would... I would definitely just do the carpet and our, or, or change it out. I would do vinyl plank. Um, I don't... I think that could be a good, you know. So to sell carpet or vinyl. Probably, carpet or vinyl, yep. Probably whatever's cost effective. Yeah, yeah. Could be their choice because vinyl kind of, you know, ties in with that. We've got hardwoods out here. So, but again, whatever works um, affordability wise, I would leave the window as is because somebody typically is going to come in and maybe do their own, you know, touch to it. Mm -hmm. So I think the room really would just stay, just maybe stay clean as it is, up. clean it up. Um, and paint wise, we'll kind of do a summary at the end because once we go through the whole house, then yeah. we can kind of see, because painting is typically the cheapest and best thing that you can do to a house, yeah. right? Yeah. Easily changes the look. And plus I always call it the $5,000 smell yes. because people come in and feel like, wow, I'm in a brand new house. But Paint has been a little bit weird lately, hasn't yes. it? Yes, we'll talk about paint. Um, 
So I was just at the paint store and I need to um, apparently shop around because due to supply chain, um, the small little paint samples, right? I have my favorite colors. I have some ideas for colors inside and out. I just wanted to buy a couple. Oh no, they don't have any paint samples for us. So I got my color swatches, right. but they weren't able to do any mix. So I had also, we'll talk about the outside. I had envisioned doing it kind of a pale light yellow, something really soft. And they were commenting to, to me, um, learn new things. One, due to shortages of minerals and the mix, things that go into manufacturing oh. in the paint, okay. they're actually out of some of the bases to create those softer colors. So I could have a very deep colored house, apparently, but that particular paint store did not have any mixes for the light yellow. So wow. Okay. He's like, how do you feel about orange? <laughs> I was like, wasn't quite thinking about orange, but you know, maybe I'll find something on the darker gray side and you know, what's trendy. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so that was good to learn because again, as we do this project, um, depending on what manufacturers you're using, what brands, um, you, you're just having to make design decisions right. to move the project forward. So right. a weekend, we're already learning a lot from the contractors we've talked about. We'll talk more about that. Um, so yeah, so right. uh, my design decisions may actually come down to what products can I get? <laughs> right. And then when you buy them, you definitely want to buy it all. Like yes. don't say all oh, come back like we do sometimes, yes. right? There's you no want to be back. like, let's just yes. look, get those five gallon buckets. Yes. And so yeah, definitely. Um, or maybe even check with the painter and see if they could get you some yeah. of the commercial, I mean, yeah. the size, yeah. you know, the five So, gallon. you know, I might just, you know, instead of getting four or five colors like I normally would, I might just narrow it down to one or two. And if I have to buy a bigger quart or whatever, yeah. I'll do that. Um, and speaking of kind of supply and buying it all. So this is one of the things you're standing next to the lovely interior door, right? It's right. all original. They've been painted. Right. Some of the doors have been painted. Some have not. So we're in the process of deciding and getting bids if we're going to do all new doors, hardware trim throughout right. the house. Right. Or do we just paint it for now? Right. Because again, we're a little afraid of biting off more than we can put back together. Right. So normally we'd come in and do a lot of demo, but we're cautiously demoing because if we can't get the product we want or it's costing four times the cost that we thought it was, which is the reality, uh, right. especially with wood products. Right. Um, things like doors and trim might just get cleaned up, painted, and we save that for a non-pandemic, non-supply chain. Well, and it kind year. of just, I mean, not, I mean, again, they're painted, so it doesn't bring back the mid-century vibe, but it does just keep those clean lines of the yeah. mid-century. So I would totally just repaint just them and keep them. Okay. You could change out handles. Yeah, and then we can do the That's the pretty modern. simple, but I would just keep the doors because, again, it just keeps the aesthetic very simple. My husband will love that answer. Yeah, because <laughs> once you start doing six panel doors. It, it changes the look, right? It changes yeah. the look. Yeah. Yeah. And just walking down the Home Depot aisle, some things that like, oh, $50 for an interior door is now 100 or 120 Yeah. yeah. So, and then you have to hang them, which is a oh, little yes. bit. Anyway, yeah. as we know, I would just paint them, okay. make them beautiful. Okay. And well, again, I think white paint we can probably get. <laughs> yeah, right, right, in big quantity. Yeah. Perfect. So do you want to take a look at what they uh, did here in the bathroom? This is something to show you. This again is a little bit of adding value and taking away value. So this is a little bit where I get heartburn. Um, so there's multiple doors in this room. We are thinking about maybe turning this into a pocket door or a barn door. Okay. Because when you have all of these doors open, right. um, as you can see, we have lovely rocks holding them. Right. Um, and then this door swings in. We've oh. also thought about putting, um, just reversing it and having the door swing into the garage. So you don't have three doors. So that just is a bit more of an aesthetic rather than a functional thing. Right. We're going to open this. This started its life as a half bathroom. And somewhere along the way, they added this lovely shower. Wow. And they ate into the bonus room to do it. And as you can tell, they did not have proper ventilation right. in this room. Right, so then you would so, take this out, close this back off to give it back to that room. Uh-huh, and keep this as a half bath. The other thing they did so you could get in the shower here 
right. is they move that this is not legal. You need to have, I think, uh, eight inches, 12 inches, something between the toilet and the sink. So as you can see, this is all very crowded. So we'll right. gain back. This will probably go up against the wall. We can have a nice size vanity right. in here. It'll be a great half bathroom. Right, get some new lights in. Yes. Yep. Lighting, new drywall, this is all coming out. So this, also the drywall of this era house right. was not the green board or the cement board we use today. Right. So that's the other advantage of it. It's a little more right. than if I was selling the house. Right. But since we're gonna put renters in, we want it nice and clean and lasting Fresh. another 50 years. Well, cause you can smell, there's a little bit of mildew smell you can yep. tell. And so that's always good to go back yes. and just do That it. does not get the green board, start <laughs> yes. start from scratch. Yeah. And give the your... smell of mildew outweighs the smell of the fresh paint. Yeah. So yeah, if somebody were selling, I think we would have to definitely remedy that because we want to sell. It's about health and safety when we sell. And yes. so we would remedy that. We might not change out that whole shower, Yes. but we could remedy that and put in some green board and yep. contractor can cut that all in. But... Yes. Yeah. Um, in here, I thought about taking the same if we end up with a vinyl plank, taking um, it all the way through. Um, again, you can smell a little bit of dog smell in here. The door needs to get replaced um, just for health and safety issues. It is not a very secure door. Yeah. Single pane glass. It has a dog door in it. We need, right, fire safety door, right? Yeah. Because it's so... an exterior. But then, uh, oh, yeah, and there's some damage there. So yeah. that makes sense. And this is such a small area yeah. that it would definitely. What do you think about taking the same if I do a vinyl floor in there, taking it all the way through the bathroom and just keeping this all one Yeah. type? Yeah. If we do carpet, then we can break up and do different. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I think that would work. Okay. I think that would look good. Okay. Yeah, because well, it'll just make it flow a little bit better. Yep. And once it's kind of yep. painted and. I mean, this actually has quite nice space because you can mm -hmm. do shelving and... Yes, there was um, a very old rickety cabinet that okay. um, came down when we did our last run to the uh, dump. <laughs> so right. it was like the bottom had like rotted out. Well, and even over time, if somebody wanted to do a stackable um, washer yep. dryer... Yeah, I it mean, actually would give you more room. That because this could be like a, you know, utility sink or... That's actually a really good... I hadn't even thought about the stackable. Yeah, because people are always, I don't know why they want the utility sinks, but I know. They really... are they all painters or I guess you come in from outside, you wash your hands, you wash up, yeah, your oil, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, yes. But yeah. so that, um, it's quite nicely set up for that. Yeah. It's a so, nice space. It's a nice space. I like your idea of doing the shelving too. We'll do something sturdy. So you could put laundry detergent, tenants yeah. can use it, something maybe wipeable. And then if you have a fire door, then can the fire door have a window? That's the that's the plan. Yeah. I really like the light. Because I here. like light. Yeah. yeah. I'm the same. I yeah. think it's just, yeah. Yeah. And if you turn around or right through the door, you will notice um, the 1963 fence that for 15 years had been um, a project apparently for the seller to do and they never got around. So as a landlord, I'm definitely going to provide a secure fence for the property. If you were selling the house, <laughs> what do you think of this vintage look? Yeah. Well, yes, that's a very good question. Right. So and in a hot market like now, we would leave it because there are a couple things. One is we have crazy lumber prices. Um, and so really, and we don't know what somebody would want to do. Would they want to come in and do something different with trees or? Sure, maybe a vinyl, even a vinyl fence. Vinyl or ch do chain link and then trees in front yeah. of it. So sure, it would just be, again, at the point we're at in the market, we would leave it. Yeah. 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 Maybe just repair a couple little areas like with, you know, which they've kind of done. Yeah. They've kind of pieced it together a little bit, but. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is going to be a whole project in itself. So yeah, okay. Well, because you're looking at what a thirty, twenty thousand dollar fence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Kim, what do you think about um, the lights? So you know, these are the five dollar standard lights oh, yeah. at Home Depot. I was thinking maybe for renting. This is where my husband and I differ a little bit. They're perfectly utilitarian, but I love the idea of maybe putting some cute, you know, lights, like fancying it up. Yeah, but you're just, but you're trying to do it economically. I would just take these off and spray paint them and just kind of make them all fresh and new, clean this out and put it back up. Okay. 
because even for selling. Yeah. Okay. Great yep. idea. Because you're not having a barbecue back here. <laughs> This no. is just a utility light. Yeah. So it's if you want to change something out, it'd be more in the front of okay. the garage oh, or something okay. where people, you know, snazzy, Curb appeal. snazz it up a bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll leave yeah. the lot in the back. Yeah. Where would you like to see next? Let's do the kitchen. Let's do the kitchen. That's always the best room to talk about. So many fun things. I know. Let's actually stop here in the dining room. I want to point out something. So as cute as this chandelier is, it won't co quite go with the updated vibe for the house. Oh, shoot, because I love chandeliers. Yeah. I just. It's cute. It's probably going to go. Right. <laughs> Do you want it? <laughs> well, I don't know, but you could put it in a bathroom or something. There, anyway. Okay, so maybe I can put it in a closet. <gasps> yeah. Um, so this is something interesting about the original um, house design. So when these houses were built, they seem to have either a picture or a, a window in the dining room or the bonus room. Um, but often they have two sliders. And so a lot of the houses I've, okay. I've sold have two sliders. So I noticed when I was looking at the outside of the house, it has cuts in the siding on either side of this window. Okay. Funny enough, this is exactly the width of a slider. Okay. And this trim has been cut. So if you notice down here, this trim has been cut on both sides. Right. So we're getting window bids right now. And what's funny about it is this is like a weird size window. So it's almost going to be the same cost to put in a second slider. Right. And put it back to what it originally was. Right. And the thing I like about that, even for a rental, even though it's spending a little more money, I need to spend the money anyway. It's a couple hundred dollars difference. Yeah. Um, and then you don't have every, like if someone's barbecuing, you don't have everyone going through yes. a family room carrying meat and whatever yeah. they're carrying, right? There's a second access yeah. to the property. And it kind of is fun just from the original layout. I mean, some people, I mean, they hunt out mid-centuries because yeah. they love that. Again, the floor plan is really appealing yeah. and it's very attractive. It's super cool that it has this extra bonus yeah. room because sometimes the houses just stop, stop. right there. Yeah. So, but I love this circular floor plan with the kitchen and the living area. Yeah, they did a good job when they built these houses, a really efficient use of space. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to change a lot to kind of elevate like the look of it now. Um, but let's go into the kitchen and talk a little bit about that. Is the sliding door open? Oh, so what, so if I was selling well, the house, what would you Well, if you were say? selling in this market, I probably wouldn't because the cost of all that, you're probably not going to capture it. So would you say leave all the original windows? I would leave the original windows for right now, but it depends. Yeah, and if you are, some people just feel they have to improve something. You know, they would have already improved the roof because mm -hmm. similar to you, it, a roof yeah. needed to be done yep. no matter what. So that's a pretty big yes. improvement. Um, as we get closer, like to the outside and some painting and such, those are pretty big things to me because people just, it's all about visual, yeah. right? Yeah. The windows are in great condition, even though they're single pane. Yeah. So, um, I mean, what's your window package? Probably well, 30. 15 to 20 right now. Okay. So that's a, that's a really good point. And it's a good time to also talk about the fact they are um, in good shape. So if I was selling, I probably wouldn't tackle it. Um, but since we're gonna put renters in and renters will yeah. look through a different lens, right? Um, one of the things to talk about um, are what are those things that need to get addressed for an appraisal? So this roof went on because the appraiser called it. I couldn't right. finance the loan right. without having a new roof on the property. It had active roof leaks right. and no appraiser was going to see past that. Um, it was really noticeable. Right. And then the second thing is um, if you have any broken glass with holes in it versus just some cracks. So sometimes when I'm talking to sellers and I put on my real estate agent hat, um, we talk about just some glass just need to get repaired. Do you need to change out the window? Because sometimes those things, roofs and, um, and, the uh, health and safety issues have to get addressed because an appraiser is going to call on those things. Even if the buyer doesn't care and wants to remodel it, the bank might care. Right. So I don't know if you've had a similar experience with homes. Right. 
it varies. It varies on the bank, but the roof is definitely a big thing because if it's leaking or shows damage, yeah. yeah. And so that was brilliant, that, yeah. you know, to get yeah. that done. Is that a before. FHA thing or it doesn't matter? It was a conventional loan. Yeah. So, um, but isn't FHA typically like more? So FHA and VA will have different standards as to health and safety repairs, uh, conventional doesn't get called um, unless it's super obvious. I mean, again, it depends on the appraiser and it depends on the bank and the loan and what the underwriters are willing to do. Um, Conventionally usually calls things like handrails on the deck or things that are gonna kill you immediately. Yeah, so, so. if it's had a second story deck on it with a bunch of wood rot yeah. and you're gonna fall through it, yeah. one, probably not safe to have people on your property that way, but yeah. I've had some transactions in which those things either had to be torn down or the buyer had to get a conventional rehab loan. So in yeah. a future episode, we can talk about, there's always ways around things. Yeah. And you can always market a home to a cash buyer. There are enough buyers in this market. You're not gonna to appeal to the whole market, but right. sellers are rarely in a position that if they price the home, right, if they're working with a great agent, you can always sell a home. Yes. Even yeah. if it's a teardown. Yeah, and they, right, they're holdbacks. Anyway, yeah. there are lots of ways to yeah. accomplish. So, I would love your ideas in the kitchen because okay. what we're going to take on and kind of the ideas for renting it are definitely different than if I was selling it. So I'd right. love to hear what you think about the space and how you would use it differently. Okay. Um, and update it. So it's clean. Right. It's just dated. Right. And one of our goals is to get the highest and best amount for rent to have tenants in here long term and to do this project once. So we're kind of taking on a bigger scope. Right. Um, knowing that that will just take a couple of more months than turning around and getting a tenant right in the property. Right. Yeah, and kitchens are interesting, aren't they? Because, you know, you can do them pretty economically, mm -hmm. especially of this size. Mm -hmm. But like in your case, you're gonna pull down the boxes and mm -hmm. everything, right? Yep. Do new appliances. Yep. The whole thing, we're gonna go to, down to the studs. We might even insulate this wall. We'll probably look at the drains. So the drains in this kitchen, we know are copper. And from past experience, um, they do not hold, they're 50 years old, first of all. Right. Um, so they've, they've served a good life. Right. But we now use for drains, uh, the plastic, uh, right. ABS drains. So, because if you were to put things like Drano down it, they'll eat away the copper and then ruin your kitchen. So we're going to renter proof this because we're not the ones living in the property. So if you live in the property and you know not to put Drano down your sink, right. you know that. Here, not as much control. So we'll right. probably do a little more excavating of this right. room right, and then build it back. New kitchen, new flooring, new drywall, new everything, cabinets, right. appliances. Right. Well, and it's interesting because if a person were to sell, the biggest question that every single buyer always asks is, can this wall come out? Yeah. Is it load bearing? Is it load bearing? <laughs> a load bearing wall is an active structural element of a home and it supports the weight of the items above or below it. So that would be the one recommendation that I would make to a seller is to find out if it's load bearing. Mm -hmm. And then again, if they have budget and are able to do it, maybe you know remove it or if they wanna take it down and put in you know, a little bit of a bar or island or something, but at least spend the money for a structural engineer to mm -hmm. <laughs> tell them that yes, it can be done. And then that way it can be explained to the buyer. Yeah. They don't have to sit there and wonder. Yeah. And then also just get a cost estimate of yeah. what it would be because yeah. the buyers want open kitchens. Yeah. They don't want, you know, tight little things. Yes. So one of the things I was thinking about if we were to sell Kim, what do you think could be done in this area? Would you do an island and well, open it up to the yeah. living room, do you think? Right. So that's a great question because right now in a hot seller's market, but we also have like a backup of labor, you know, contractors are super booked. So it, it, it all depends on where a seller is at on their budget and their time to help them evaluate what they're gonna get the most of. I always feel, and I don't know if you find this too, is whatever money you spend in a kitchen, you get it out 
almost all of it if you do it right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like Absolutely. modernize and just make it, you know, better, whether it's open or, you know, put in different appliances. So again, those are elements that a seller really, we can give them the ideas, but then the seller really needs to decide, you know, what they want to take I agree. on. I agree. Sometimes, Sometimes it can be just new countertops. Yeah. And that will really refresh the space. Right. So one of our ideas in this particular space is if you notice, there's a set of cabinets on this side facing the other way. Um, this would have been an eating kitchen. Okay. At one point. Right. Next to you is one segment of countertops. There's another segment of countertops next to the fridge. So what we're thinking about doing is actually moving this fridge and putting it against this wall, doing a more modern, larger size fridge. Right. Um, it will all be stainless steel in here. Side note, because that's all you can get right now. Um, but right. it will also elevate the, um, the space, you know, design wise. And it will add actually about three feet of counter space to this very small kitchen. But what do you think, like if you were to take that space and just make the fridge space bigger? Because Here. it's nice that everything is weighted on this side. Mm -hmm. It's super attractive. Like you walk in and it's a very, yeah, it's a very comfortable layout. It's a functional L-shaped kitchen, right? And if you wanted more storage space, you could somehow figure out how to L it over here, you know, L-shape mm -hmm. it. Um, you could even do something with like a, you know, like a bar that you could drop down mm -hmm. and pull up for extra workspace. Okay, that's an idea. You know, if you wanted to keep this area kind of free so people don't hit their hips or yeah. bang their, yeah. but you can. And, or have to move the heater vent. But you could drop, you know, have like a drop bar, you know, to, you know. And then would you do countertop here and uppers and lowers? Because one of the things that we feel this, ki this kitchen lacks is counter space. Right. Well, you could, and I mean, that's where Pinterest is our friend, right? Yeah. Because you could do some open shelving, like for okay. attractive cookbooks yeah. or, you know, or maybe do that on the end okay. and then have some cabinets in. Okay. And then, you know, as you get into the corner, that's where you have those great, you know, pull out storage sure. systems sure. that you can fit a lot of pots sure. and pans or whatever back in there. We had also considered maybe doing a floor to ceiling pantry and any more storage space. Right, right. It'll be a blank canvas. It'll be an empty room that we get to redesign. So yeah. part of it is also what in reality. Um, but these cabinets are really quite narrow. And so if you're doing total new cabinet um, shelves, I mean, you possibly could get them a little bit wider because these don't even fit big dinner plates, right? Correct. Yes. So then yeah. you're going to so get- So they're going to be deeper. You're going to get deeper and then you have a little more space there. And then these are quite nice because they're very... I mean, yeah, they're deep. What you lose here is um, maybe getting a, a cabinet, a base cabinet that comes all the way back. Because what you're losing right now is all of this storage space. It's just empty. Right. Well, so they have those really... I've seen them in a couple of houses, those cool European yeah. wire things. They yep. come out, they almost triple fold. Yep. They're quite cool. Yeah. So that's the fun. We get to start shopping for cabinets and then take the yeah. ideas of what's in our head and then the practicality of how much it costs yeah. and what it actually lays out. You know, So right now we've kind of laid some um, rulers out to see how deep cabinets would be and we'll figure out... Um, and I keep tripping over. What, yes. Um, we'll figure out what, what space works. But I, I do like the idea that if if this was a sell, you know, if you were selling it, you could totally open this if the budget and time allowed. Yes. Because doing a no, you know, knock down wall is, and just replay, you know, gutting it as a shell versus getting into potential new framing might be a whole nother. But yeah. I love the idea. I mean, you'd let a lot of light in from the front of the house as well. Yeah. And for people, you know, if it does happen to be load bearing, you know, you can either do a timber across and somehow incorporate that into the design or some people just, you know, car, I mean, it's kind of from the sixties. They just open that window up, right. Yep. And keep like a shelf wall. Yeah. But, but it, then you can, again, do base cabinets or like you said, that some yeah, other create a niche yep. and, you know, yeah. Yeah. And do like okay. some type of. Maybe um, you get to come cabinet shopping with me. 
Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. are we in agreement that whether you're renting or selling, it is worth the investment when it comes to kitchens? Yes, I would say that if this was a listing and the seller wanted quick hits on what to sell, I would say it's clean, it's functional. Yeah. Let's put our money in I, and have a limited budget and time because you're not going to get this kitchen remodeled in a week. Right. But you could paint the house and do some other updating light fixtures. And so in the end, we'll do a summary of like what the big ticket things would be. Like, and for me, it's gonna be exterior paint. She already did the roof, but that would have been one of them, the paint and the, and the roof. And then whatever else, it's gonna be the bathroom. The bathroom mm -hmm. and that bathroom have to be taken care of and the floor, the carpet. So we'll come back through yeah. and just do a quick yeah. summary. Yeah. So let's take, take a look at another big project room. Okay. Take a look at the full bathroom. So this is the one full bathroom in the house. Okay. It has multiple doors. Oh, yeah. So you have a Jack and Jill into the master. Um, you have a good size vanity. All the parts and pieces are here, you know, perfectly functional. However, yeah. if you look at the shower really closely, tile has been loosened up on that window area. Right. And when you look at the outside of the house, you can tell there's been some water damage. We have holes. And you have holes. I'm guessing yeah. at one point there was grab bars. Right. There. Yes. Um, yeah. So a couple ideas in here are fixing the, fixing the structures, fixing the problem areas. Yeah. Um, that probably means, well, it means getting the entire bathroom. I would address the plumbing in the wall and bring it up to today's standards and code and materials because if I'm going to open up the, you know, and re-tile again, I'd like it to last another 50 years. Yeah. A uh, new window. Again, if you look up, there's been moisture issues. The fan probably has not been used regularly or just can't keep up. Yeah. So this drywall, just from personal experience and doing this remodeling before, this is all just standard drywall from the 60s. You know, it's not the green board, it's not the moisture resistant. Right. So we'll make sure that it again, it'll last another 50 years. Yeah. And then one of the questions is, do we um, put in a new tub? Is there value in putting in a, in a new tub? The surround will probably be white subway tile or something equally as universal. But do we want a new bathtub? You could just have the bathtub recoded if you wanted to, because, you know, the companies come, they just recode it. There's really not value. It's nice because it's low. I thought that too. So I, I personally like, and, and it has detail and, on it. And it's I love sealed. it that it's, yeah. Yeah. So I think just. Just yeah. recode it. Recode it. Cause you've got a couple little dings. Yep. Recode it. And then if you're going to do new tile. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And again, I think people are going to love it because, you know, some of these big tubs now that you have to like literally like <laughs> yes. do yoga to step over. You're like, wow. So, yeah, I like the idea. And subway tile is so classic. So, yeah. And this is a beautiful space because really they've wasted, you know, some of it with this huge um, weird cabinet. But um, <laughs> because the cabinet... Is this a drawer? No, that's the beautiful part about it. It's just wasted space. Oh, I love it. So there's so much so to do here. It's yeah. So it's yeah. tall. You yeah. know, the original 60s would have been lower. Yeah. So they somehow brought it up, but right. at the same time, wasted about eight inches. Right. Right. Well, it looks like they shoved this inside of something out the carcass of something else. It, that's exactly what it looks so, like. So, but that's okay because this is huge. Yeah, it's great space, isn't it? And so this is great to take this out and just put in like a beautiful little hotel like, you know, sink with some open shelves Shelving. or something below mm -hmm. for towels. That'll and... be nice. What do you think about the door behind you? Do you think there's value in closing off that wall and not making it a Jack and Jill and having more master bedroom wall space? Or do you keep it a Jack and Jill because it's I, if it's one or two occupants that live here, they have access to the... I would leave it. And this is why I just feel that 
you know, houses that have one door into the bathroom, and this is the main bath because it this has is a it. shower. Yeah. It just feels, yeah. Okay, leave yeah. it. Yeah, okay. I would leave it. Yep. And plus it's handy if that's the master, yeah. then they don't have to walk out into the hallway into yes. here. It kind of is the best of both because it's still your common bath, but it's also your... Maybe put a lock on the door because one of the things we notice is there's no lock on the door. Yeah. So that's an interesting... Right. Choice. Right. But maybe they just, yeah, yeah. never had kids, yeah. but there's a I lock, think, on, oops, oops, a lock yeah. on that door. I think there was like, maybe we took it off already. I think there was a little oh, latch. Oh, right here. Yeah, the latch. there was a little latch. Yeah. Okay. So I think probably that's the one other thing I want to point out that you see in houses like this a lot is if you look down here at the floor, um, at the door, at the um, the height of these doors, mm -hmm. and there's this big trim piece. Right. So my guess is at one point, because these are original doors, there was carpet in some of these rooms, and oh. all of the doors are now cut short. Right. So they're in good condition. Oh my gosh, I love them. It's part of that mid-century that's still there because it matches the other... Yeah, the entry. The entry yeah. thing. I would just... And so I think we need to uh, improve the tracks, we'll right? Just put another... Broken. Just a little thing on the back. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it's swinging. Just a little bit yeah, higher. Yeah, they've been broken off. Just a little higher up. So yeah. that's, again, the little notices that, like, for selling and for renting, I don't... I, I think I am leaning toward keeping them because I like the vintage of them yeah i don't love that at one time they had been cut for carpet but it also just kind of tells the story of, of the house has had other other incarnations but you can also just get some um you know um tungsten tongue oil and uh, and stain it and stain it yeah. the same color as the floor and it'll yeah. just yes yeah i yeah. like i like that handy trick when you're working with um with any kind of wood at home depot they sell these little pens Oh, yeah. And you can get them in all different cherry, oak. I don't know. They have 30 different colors. And you can just walk around the house and touch up your raw wood spaces. Oh, yeah. So, but you know, if you take steel wool and just kind of oil it up, plus it'll make, it'll kind of bring back some of the vibrance well, of we'll the still, wood. Oh, tell me more about that. Oh, yeah. Um, it's uh, like, does it rough, rough it up? Steel wool, it, the oh. super fine stuff, yeah. like 500 or whatever count. And so I do that a lot when I see water damage on wood. Like I'll, it'll just bring it back to life. You just, you just gave me a new trick. Yeah. I had found some oil, like Murphy's oil. Yeah. That kind of does that, but it doesn't last very long. Like it'll shine it up for a couple of months and then that water damage. Yeah, tends to it's come not down. perfect, but at least it kind of helps. Steel wool. And then you have to, bring it down. you can also do color. So maybe the, you know, do both of them. Yeah, a okay. little bit of color, um, not the marker, yeah. but they have color oil that you okay. put on the steel wool. And okay. then you just rub it in, and then it kind of will help brighten up the oil. Kim's but you can brighten up hacks. the whole thing. Number one. Yeah. We're going to start making a list. Yeah. Love it. Right. What do you think yeah. about lighting? So we haven't talked too much about lighting. So one of the traits of these homes, they have very few overhead lights. Right. So this is the master bedroom. Um, none of the bedrooms have overhead lights. The living room doesn't have overhead lights. We had contemplated potentially putting in can lights. Not sure if I want to go there or not. And for selling, would you say change light fixtures or don't change right. light fixtures? Well, for selling, when you get into that electrical thing, it's a whole can of worms, right? Because it's not super simple always. Um, and the kitchen had light. The bathroom, of course, you know, could use, you know, good lights. Light fixtures are easy to change out because they're, you know, Home Depot has yeah. pretty simple, easy lights. And uh, for selling, I would just stage it and bring in lamps. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. So I think that's our tour. Yeah. So, oh, here we have the, brand. so we have that combination of painted wood and not, and the original finish. Yeah. Um, these are really interesting too, because they have some kind of shine to them that we haven't noticed before on our other properties. Yeah. So they've actually kind of held up well. Again, they're cut short. This one is specifically cut really short yeah. on the bottom, but I don't know that anyone's going to notice that. 
Oh, and I love the brown. I just, it's really nice. We were thinking about new door hardware, though. The door hardware is not in great shape. It's kind of tarnished and end of life. Um, so thought about a, a pretty brushed nickel or something. Yeah, I mean, you could just even still find some gold, some gold and try to and, stick. And but stick with it? Because you've got, Yeah, you the know, hinges are all gold. Hinges. We probably are not going there. Because that, again, to your point, that, that opens up that can of worms. Because you've got gold in the closet. Uh huh. Gold there. Nice. Yeah, there's kind of a comment. Some of these um, inset ceiling lights are gold. Some are in oh. better shape than others, where you're going to try to clean those up. Well, right, and you could spray paint the ones that aren't, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You might be able to just find some pretty simple gold similar. Yeah. It's kind of fun. I mean, and gold is kind of, it's kind of like jewelry, right? Yeah. It makes a comeback. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, you had mentioned painting. Do you want to take a look quickly outside yeah. and I'll show you kind of what we were thinking? Yeah. For painting? Yeah. So my mother-in-law has been very busy here taking, this was all huge bushes. So we've cleaned it out, made it a lot oh better gosh. looking. Um, beautiful roses. Oh my gosh, they're so um, amazing. So we're, for now, we're gonna keep the roses. We've kind of uncovered the detail. One of the reasons we wanted to get here specifically is as you can tell, right. this gets, this is Southern exposure. And so this gets the brunt of the heat and the weather. Right. And the paint, it obviously needs to be repainted. So probably a no-brainer for a seller. I would yeah. say you need to paint the house. I see a lot of chipping paint. And then you've got all the um, the eave. Yes, the new soft, roof. Yep, underneath from the roof. And yep. yep. Well, anytime you paint the outside when it needs it, it just definitely brings it to a different level. And then because you've got these super, you know, cute shutters, it kind of just really is going to tie the whole house yeah. together. Yeah. It's very very sweet so and you were thinking of yellow but i was if, thinking of yellow but we, apparently yellow is maybe not the greatest exterior color i'm hearing so unless um, we pick a thousand dandelions and make yes. our own <laughs> hey are you up to it i really wanted a yellow oh house, my gosh but i might need to just move on with that dream and right. go with you know a nice right. gray or i was even thinking maybe a soft green um, I look around the neighborhood and try to, you know, figure out what will fit in, what goes with the style of the house. Again, I'm not trying to make the house something it's not. Um, so I want to really own those original details. Right. Bring that the, to life, maybe highlight but Maybe those. start with your door color and then go out from, yes. to your house so color. So I personally love a red door. Now in this house, they actually painted the whole front of the, the entryway okay. red for some reason. Right. Um, so that will probably turn into body color. I love the, the red. I also really would love a turquoise or an orange door. Yes, I we'll agree. We'll see if I can get my and husband so, sign so turquoise or orange. Um, so when I was in California last week, they had like those, you know, kind of that kind of pale gray houses. Uh -huh. And it looks so amazing because those everything is so poppy yeah. yeah you can just put pots you know or mm -hmm. whatever and okay. do some little accent there super exciting to explore and talk about these different ideas and I think we both learned a lot about you know some different tips that you know we can work with the country that you can work with the contractors on <laughs> you can and work I, the I can recommend to the sellers <laughs> yeah so it's kind of fun to keep exchanging all these fabulous ideas and um, I think our viewers are going to be super excited to yeah. stay tuned and we'll see what Beth can transform the magical house into. Well, thanks so much for all your input. That was super helpful. I'm gonna incorporate some of those ideas. Um, and yeah, so the work lies ahead. Um, stay tuned, we will have more updates. I'll share more with you. We'll talk about where we're at and um, happy summer. Yeah, sounds good. Great, Kim, thanks yeah. for stopping by. See you soon. See you soon.